In this video, I want to talk about what it means for a process to be stationary and also what it means for a process to be weakly dependent. So remember, the idea with time series is that we have some sort of process and that process at time t we could call, let's call it xt. And the idea with a time series process is that we don't actually see the values which that process outputs for all time. We only just see the sort of values which we actually see at a given point in time. So we see what we call realizations of that particular process. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So at a time one, we might get out a value of x, which is x1. And then in the next period, we might see a value of the process, which is x2. And then in general, if we sort of continue up until the point of time t, then we might get out the value of xt. So you can sort of think about xt, subscript t here, as meaning the values which the process takes on at a given point in time, or at a point in time which is given by t. Another word I wanted to define in this video is something which is called a stochastic process, or another word for stochastic is what we call a random process. And random in this context doesn't mean that the value of which x can take on rather can be any value. It just means that before we actually see any of these individual realizations, we don't know with certainty what value the process is going to take on. So in that sense, xt is not a deterministic process whereby we can know what values the process takes on in the future with certainty at this current time. So why do we actually care about whether a process is stationary and whether it's weakly dependent? Well, the reason we care is because if these two conditions are satisfied, then beta hat least squares tends in probability to the true population parameter beta if we use OLS on our sample. Okay, so what are the conditions under which a process is what we call stationary? The first of these conditions is that we say that the expectation of that process, the expectation of xt, has to be equal to some constant. So that importantly means that the process doesn't have a mean which is varying across time, so it's not a function of time. The second condition is that the variance of our process, so the variance of xt, has itself not similarly not got to be a function of time. So I'm just going to say this is equal to sigma squared, where sigma squared importantly is not a function of time either. So that just means that the variance is constant across time. The last condition for a process to be stationary, or technically for a process to be weakly stationary, or for it to be another word for that is covariance stationary, is that the covariance between xt and xt plus h, where h is some sort of period in the future, has got to be some function of h, and importantly, not a function of time. Okay, so those are the three conditions which we require for a process to be what we call stationary. What are the conditions we require for a process to be weakly dependent? Well, it turns out that the covariance, or the correlation rather, of xt with xt plus h, if you can make up what I'm writing there, must tend to zero as h tends to infinity. So what this means is, it means that the value of our process at, let's say, time t must be less related to the value which our process outputted at time 1, x1, than x2 is with x1, for example. And technically, this sort of covariance of x1 with some sort of value of the process in the future has to decrease towards zero as the number of steps in the future goes to infinity. And actually, technically, this isn't quite enough, we need to say that the process, that the correlation for this process goes to zero quickly enough. But for all our purposes, we're just really going to be concerned with does the correlation between xt and xt plus h go to zero as h goes to infinity. In the next video, I'm going to talk through each of these individual conditions in turn, just so that we can sort of understand fully what the implications are and why we're actually requiring this of our time series. 